Hi, this is Amy, and in this training section, we're going to talk about Google Calendars. So just like always, we can start out at our portal page, and we can click on the link to the part of Google we want to use. So I'll click on the Google Calendars portion, and you'll see my Huntsville ISD Google Calendar open. Now, all of the concepts we're going to talk about today and so much more are covered on this web page. This is the Google Support Calendar site and this is a web address that you can use to get to the specific page of this site where I'm going to start. So it's goo.gl forward slash lowercase h and the rest are numbers 3672. So if you'd like to navigate to that page, uh, you can go through this training with me or else I'll show you right here on the screen. So that my calendar looks more like yours, I'm going to start out working with this sample calendar that I've created um, so that it's just completely blank and you can maybe see what's going on better. So let's say that we want to create an event for August 14th. There's two well, there's lots of ways we can do that, but, but I'm going to show you two different ways. So one way is just to click one time on the 14th and type in. Maybe we're going to have a meeting with our team at 10 a.m. So let's create that event and see what happens. So you can see that the meeting, it doesn't just say meeting with team at 10 a.m. Google actually figured out that we mean it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. It defaulted us to a one hour meeting. Now let's do something a little bit more uh, fancy. Let's say that we, we really want to put in all the details for this meeting ourselves. So we can double click the event we already created or let's just pretend something. Let's just pretend we haven't put anything yet. We want to really do this go all the way. So. Let's double click now instead of single clicking to make a new event. When we do that, we get the full event editor. So now let's put in meeting with team and let's deselect all day so that we can choose our own hours. So we'll make it last two hours there. Uh, where's it going to be? Let's say it's going to be in the conference room and um, we can talk about what we're going to do in the meeting right down here if we'd like to do that. And we can invite other people to the meeting right over here. So once we get all those parameters set, we can save and we'll see the meeting on our calendar. Now let's say that this meeting is not just going to happen one time. We have the same team and we're going to meet all together um, frequently. We're going to meet every other week on the same day at the same time. Let's set up this event to recur. So we'll go back to our event again and now we'll click repeat and we'll do repeat every one week because every single week on Tuesday we're going to meet and we'll leave it going on forever. So when is it going to end? Never. And we'll click done. Let's save that and go back to our calendar now. And now we'll see month after month on every Tuesday at 10 o'clock we're going to meet. But hold on, we're going to have Christmas and uh, Thanksgiving and all that kind of stuff. So let's look at November, for example. I'm going to toggle on our Huntsville ISD calendar so we can see when Thanksgiving is. And we're going to be not at work this day. So what shall we do? Let's go ahead and just delete this one event, only this instance, and then we can carry on and, and have our repeating event. So we'll delete this one, only this instance, and this one, only this instance, so that we can you still use our repeating functions, but have that work out. All right, let me turn this calendar back off again so that you can see just the one calendar we're working with. So now that you know how to create events, let's go ahead and turn this calendar back off. And I'm going to show you uh, my real calendar, and we'll talk about how this really works. So this calendar right here, the one that has my name, and yours, of course, has your name, this is really not a completely private calendar. This is my professional calendar. It's part of the Huntsville ISD domain, and it's for me to use for my professional life. I have a private calendar, too, with my personal email address, and I've set that calendar up through that account and then shared it with myself at my amayor at huntsville-isd.org so that I can control that calendar while I'm at work without even logging into that other account. But it's important to know that this calendar, other people can add it and they can see it. 
the reason why it's set up that way is so that people can schedule a meeting with me or see if uh, you know where I am what I'm doing or whatever and and that's all that's all great I, I don't mind that a bit and um, so I leave my calendar settings default and that's what happens so if I'd like to see another user's calendar, I can actually add their calendar into mine. So right down here where it says other calendars, let me type in my colleague, Cherie, and I'm going to start typing her name and then choose her. And I've chosen to add her calendar. Here it is, right up here. It adds as a layer into my calendar. Yours might show up right down here underneath other calendars, but now you can see that Cherie's calendar is there also. Um, and I can do that with any of my colleagues within our Google domain or another person if they choose to share their calendar with me even outside our domain I can add and that really helps me to set up meetings. So let's look at what we might do if we want to have a calendar that multiple people can edit. Let me tell you when this might be nice. For example, let's say that I'm a teacher and I want to create a new calendar that everybody who I teach with, everybody on a team, we can all use. This might be helpful to have when students are going to have tests because we maybe don't want to all have tests on the same day. Or maybe we're going to have a field trip and only one person needs to enter the information so that we don't all have to repeat the work. So let's call this uh, Team Tornado Calendar. and let's set some settings here so hold on just a second let me go back and show you how I did that because I didn't really talk about it what I did is click the down arrow next to my calendars and I chose create new calendar so let's try that again so we'll be team tornado calendar I actually don't need to put calendar do I everybody can tell it's a calendar and I'm gonna choose share this calendar with others and for this purpose I'm actually gonna make this calendar public so that I can embed it into my website and um, everybody in Huntsville ISD could see that, that'd be fine with me. And then I want to put my team members down here. So in my case, that's uh, Cherie, and I'll give her Make Changes and Manage, and uh, that's Margetta. And I'll add her and give her also Make Changes and Manage. So once I get all my team members added, I have my calendar named. I'll click Create Calendar. I get a warning that it will be visible to the world, but that's A-OK. -okay. And now I'm going to see my calendar show up right down here in my list, and there it is. So I'm going to click the down arrow next to it and choose display only this calendar so that we can start to work on this calendar. If I have my calendar onto and I create a new event, it's default going to go onto my calendar, my personal work calendar. But that's not where I want the event to go. So I'll show only this calendar, and now when I add events, it's going to go where I want it to. So let's say that um, we're going to have a field trip on the 21st and you know how to add that in. I can put that event and then uh, we can all put our test in. Let's pretend we're going to put some tests in on Friday the 24th for multiple subject areas and let's color code those. So let's say on the 24th we're going to have a math test. And let's say that all of our math tests are going to be green and we don't have to put in a time because this could be multiple periods for this team so whatever period you have math you're going to be having a test now let's put in a language arts test and let's make all of those um, this blue color here so you can see how we can start to build this calendar and parents and students can see this with all of our shared data so let's look at now how we can give someone a web address for this calendar that they can use to view this data. So let's click the down arrow and go back to our calendar settings and let's click on our Team Tornado calendar right over here and now let's look at these settings right down here. If we go to this HTML link for our Team Tornado calendar we'll be able to see what this looks like to other people. So you can see that right now, while I look at it in web view, I don't have my color coding. But what people can do is click plus Google Calendar right down here, and this calendar will become a layer on their own calendar if they have a Google account and are logged into Google. So this is a way for other people to add our calendar. We can also use this code right over here to embed that into our web page. But since this is just an introduction, that's for another day. So let's cancel now and go back to our calendar. 
and let's look at how to hide and show different calendars. So you saw me before turn these calendars on and off. All I'm doing is just clicking one time and that calendar shows up and then I can click it again and it will go away. I can also color code. You can see right now the iTech calendar is the same color as mine, which could be confusing. So let me go ahead and fix that. I'll make their calendar this pink color, and you can see all those events change. And now their color is a separate color. And I can actually turn on all these calendars at one time if I choose. Let me show you a separate function. Let's say that right now I don't really need to see Cherie's calendar layered on mine anymore. What I can do is choose hide this calendar from the list and then it will no longer even show up over there. If I want to get it back again, I can add it right down here or I can go to my down arrow and settings and I'll see Cherie's calendar in there and I can put a check mark to turn it back on so that it's in my list again. Remember before we talked about how to customize our Gmail inbox with labs and some of those were really important. Well the same is true for Google Calendar. So let's go and set up some of our labs. So we're going to choose the gear in the top right hand corner and we'll choose labs. One that I think you might want to do is to allow event attachments. So if you have let's say a PDF that's a flyer for your event and you want to put that as an attachment on your calendar event then you would want to enable this lab so that you'll be able to do that. Just like always, look through these different labs and see which ones appeal to you. I like this one, Event Flare. It lets me put an icon by my calendar events. That's important to me. Um, you might want to turn on the year view so that you can see your calendar as a year. Um, if you want to put a background image in your calendar, you can certainly do that. So when you find the labs you want, go ahead and save your calendar. You'll see these new features pop up over here on the right hand side. Let's take a look at how to change the default setting for our calendar. So let's click on our settings gear in the top right and then our settings selection there. Um, I like to see my calendar view, the default view, as month view and that setting is right down here. You can change that to whatever you like it to be. If you don't want to see weekends on your calendar then you can change that setting right there. So several things you might care about. Another setting that I care about is the mobile setup tab right here. So you might want to put your phone number in there so that you can get SMS notifications of events that are upcoming on your calendar. So let me show you how you do that once you have the mobile setup complete. So you'll follow the directions on the screen to do that. And then you might want to set up uh, notifications like I have mine set up. So let me show you how mine look. I'm going to go back to my calendar settings again and I'm going to go back into my calendar here except this time I'm going to click on notifications right here in the middle. So you can see that I have mine set up. By default I'm reminded by a pop-up 10 minutes before an event and I get a text message. SMS means text message 30 minutes before an event occurs. You can add all different kinds of reminders. You can give yourself an email. Maybe you want an email uh, 60 minutes, an hour before an event occurs. You can set this up however you like. Um, and Google will do it for you. If you like keyboard shortcuts, Google is really the tool for you. If you're in your calendar and you want to see the keyboard shortcuts, you can just hold down shift and hit the question mark and this will show you lots of different keyboard shortcuts. The most popular ones I think are probably the view changers up here so I can click hit D on my keyboard and see the day view, W to see the week view, M to go back to the month view, N to go next, P previous. The same concept works in your Gmail account. You can hit shift, hold down the question mark, and you'll see all of the different uh, shortcut keys. So I hope that gets you started with Google Calendar. There's always so much more to learn. Don't forget about the help sites I showed you in the beginning of the video, and I hope you have a great day.